Hi there, my name is Jane and welcome to Loopy Mabel Vintage Style. If you're new here and you haven't seen any of my videos before, you're very welcome. And if you like what I do, the content that I create, the tutorials, then please, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. Then you'll be kept up to date with all the videos that I bring out. And obviously, hello to all my lovely subscribers. I love all your comments. I love your feedback. And it really does spur me on to keep creating for you. So in today's video, it is a tutorial, a crochet tutorial. And as I promised a few videos back I was going to show you how to make some pretty bunting we're in the middle of summer now or we are here in the UK and it's lovely to have the bunting up in the garden or also around the house so I've been designing a pretty pretty lacy bunting flag so I've picked three colours, pink, green and white, and there it's going to go in my garden. So if you'd like to learn how to make this really simple bunting, then grab a coffee and I'll see you back here in a sec. To make this pretty bunting, these lovely pretty flags, um, I'm going to be using a 4mm hook. Uh, you may also need some stitch markers if you're fairly new to crochet. They are very handy on marking the beginning and ends of your rows. You'll also need some darning needles to sew in your ends. I've got some scissors. And the yarn I've been using for these um, flags is the Rico Essentials Cotton Double Knit. It's a lovely mercerised yarn and I picked these three pretty colours. So I've gone for a pale pink, a lovely pale green and a lovely crisp white. So I'll put the links for all these items in the um, box below and if you need any of these things then you just click on the link and it will take you to where I got them from. It is an Amazon affiliate uh, link so um, all it does it just takes you to the product, it doesn't cost you any more at all to click on the link. It just gives me a small commission if you do decide to buy any of the items. I will get a small commission which I then reuse to help me uh, in my channel in buying yarn and crochet hooks and whatnot. But let's get down to the tutorial. So I'm going to continue on with the white. I'll just show you the flag that we're making. So obviously it needs blocking to give it the points a bit more crisp in definition. But this is what we're going to be making. Really, really simple. Five rows in total. So let's begin. This tutorial will be in UK terms. If you're watching from the US, you need to be aware of that. So we're going to start off with our slip knot. And we're going to chain four. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. So you've got four chains there on your hook and we're going to insert our hook into that very first chain here. So insert your hook into that first chain, yarn over, pull through and slip stitch closed. Now it is a little bit fiddly if you're new to crochet but you've created a little ring, chain ring there. So you need to be finding that centre. Just, just pull it apart and you'll see the centre and we're going to be inserting our hook in to that centre there. So we're going to chain one which doesn't count as a stitch and then we're going to go down into that centre and we're going to work 12 trebles so 12 trebles so yarn over insert your hook into that center yarn over and pull through 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that's your first treble. I'm just going to do that 12 in total. And we're going to do that all the way around. So we've got 12 in total. And then we're just going to insert our hook into that first treble that we did. So insert your hook into the top of that treble there. And just going to slip stitch. And that's round one complete. So for round two, we're going to work uh, trebles again. And I'm going to be, you can either chain three, so one, two, and three, and that'll count as your first treble. And then into that same stitch, you're going to work another treble, like so. But I prefer to do the standing treble. I think it's much neater and less noticeable. So I'm going to be doing the standing treble. But if you're not comfortable with doing the standing treble, at the beginning of the row when we need to do a treble, you just chain three. It's exactly the same. So I'm just going to do a standing treble, which is pull up the yarn slightly, twist your hook round, bring your yarn like you would do and round the back of it like so, and then yarn through. And that gives you the same height and it looks very, very similar to a treble. And then in the same stitch, work another treble. And look how similar that looks to that one. And then I'm going to chain one. And then into the next treble, I'm going to work two trebles. So one. And two. Chain one. And then two trebles into the next. I'm going to do this all the way along. So two trebles, chain one into every treble. Chain one. I've got one more to do. So two more trebles into that last one there. Chain one. And we're just going to slip stitch to the top of that first treble. So I'm going to slip stitch to the top of my first standing treble. If you chose to do the chain three, you would slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So it's exactly the same, but I'm going to slip stitch to the top of my standing treble, which is there. And a slip stitch, and that's round two. Moving on to round three, we need to move across to that chain space there. So all you need to do is just, you just need to slip stitch along. So insert your hook into the top of that treble there. And then insert your hook into that chain space and then you just slip stitch. So now where we need to be. And we are going to do a chain three or a standing treble. Well, I'm going to do a standing treble. So you lift your yarn up slightly, twist your hook. Bring the yarn behind and then pull through the two loops. And then again into that space, we're going to work a treble, then chain one, and then two more trebles all down into that chain space. So you should have your two trebles, your chain, your two trebles, and then we're going to work into the next space and we're going to repeat this all the way around in the space so two trebles chain one two trebles all in that chain space and into the next chain space repeat so repeat this all the way along so if i leave you to do two trebles chain one two trebles into every chain space. I shall see you somewhere around about here. Right, so I've just got one last chain space to do. So two trebles, chain one, two trebles. There we go. And we're just going to slip stitch to the top of our first treble. So if you've done a standing treble like me, you would slip stitch to the top of your standing treble. Or if you chose to do the chain three, you'd slip stitch to the top of your chain three. So I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of my standing treble. And that is round three. So it's starting to take shape. 
So we're moving on to round four. Again, we need to move across to that space there, the chain space. So you just need to insert your hook into the top of your stitches and just slip stitch across. And slip stitch into that space. So you are now in the right position for round four. So we should now be over that chain space. And again, I'm going to do a stand and treble or you can do your chain three. So let's do that. And we're going to do two more trebles into that space. So straight down into that same space and do two more trebles. And we're going to move right across to the next chain space. So make sure you go across to the chain space just take my hook out and show you. So we're going to be working in the chain spaces, not those spaces there. They're not a chain space. It's where you did your two trebles, your chain, your two trebles into that space. So don't be tempted to go into that space there. It's the one in between the two trebles and then another two trebles on the other side. So I'm going to be moving right across into the chain space and I'm going to be working three half trebles. One, two and three and then into the next chain space three trebles. So one, two and three this is where we're going to create that shaping to straighten it out and bring in the angles for the triangle shape. So I'm going to move into that next chain space. So there it is there. Not there in the space. And we're going to do three double trebles. So yarn over, yarn over. Insert your hook, pull through, yarn over through, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and again, yarn over, yarn over, working your double trebles, so three in total, three double trebles, and then chain one, and then back down into the same space, three more double trebles. One, two, three. We're going to go down into the next chain space and work three trebles. So insert your hook and work three trebles. So one, two, and three into the next chain space three half trebles so yarn over pull through them all and then into the next chain space three trebles and three into the next space three double trebles so yarn over yarn over into the next chain space work three double trebles chain one and then down into that same space three more double trebles and that's our second corner created like so into the next chain space three trebles one two and three into the next chain space three half trebles so one two and three into the next chain space three trebles one two and three 
and into the next chain space three double trebles a chain one and a three double trebles three chain one three more double trebles and we go and we're back to where we started with our three trebles so we're just going to slip stitch to the top of our chain three if you chose to do the chain three or my standing treble which I'm going to do and that is round four so I'll just show you what this looks like now so you're now getting the shape of the flag starting to create the three points and we've just got to go one more round and the bunting is complete and again we need to move across to the space these spaces that we've got here so just going to insert your hook and just slip stitch across so one two and three so we're now over that space there now it's not a chain space but it is a space so we're going to be working in these spaces now and again we're going to work around very very similar but this time we're going to start off with chain two if you're doing your chains to start with chain two for your half trebles or i'm going to do my standing half treble so that's my standing half treble and then two more half trebles into the same space like so and again into the next space three more half trebles so one two and three into the next space three trebles so one two three and into the next space three double trebles chain one three double trebles and the next space three trebles so you can see that we're graduating in size around each side so we have three double trebles three trebles then three half trebles and into the next space another three half trebles three and then three trebles into the next so one two three and then we're going to go up in size again with our three double trebles chain one three double trebles into that corner so we're going to work three trebles into the next then three half trebles into the next three half trebles into the next and then three trebles into the next And we'll just come round to our last corner, so, so three double trebles, chain one, three double trebles. And we've just got one last set of three trebles into that last space there. And three. I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of our chain two or our standing half treble, which is what I did. And you just need to trim your yarn. And just pull it through and pull to tighten. How simple was that? Five rounds. Fabulous as wedding decorations. Absolutely fabulous if you're having a, like a boho vintage style wedding. Just to make your room pretty or maybe for a nursery. The list is endless. So following on from that, we will then sew in our ends and then I'll show you how to join them all together to make a pretty string garland. So I'm choosing the white as my trim for the top. 
but you could use any colour, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to start off with our slip knot. And you just do a, a selection of chains. Now you just chain until you've got the length that you think you're going to need. I'm going to do 42 because it's a nice length. 41, 42. So as I say, you can go shorter or longer. And then I'm just going to pick up, put my flags in the order that I've chose. Obviously I'm using the three colours for my flags. Uh, so I'm going to start off with the green, then the white, then the pink. So all we're going to do is get our first flag. Now I'll just quickly show you, there is a right and a wrong side for the flags. So these are all the right way. If I turn the white one over with the back showing, you can see it looks slightly different to the right way. So whichever way you're going to do, but as long as you've got them all facing the right way. So I've got mine facing right side facing. I'm just going to get the first flag. And you see that space, that chain space we've got in the corners, we're going to use that space. So just insert your hook into that space. And just slip stitch. So you've now got your chain attached. And then we're just going to work along the tops of each of our stitches. So you're just going to insert your hook all the way along these. So it's really simple so you don't have to count your stitches because they're already there. So you're just going to insert your hook into that first one. And we're going to work double crochet. Just insert your hook all the way along in every stitch. Until we get to that space there. Insert your hook and work another double crochet and stop. We're going to stop there and we're going to pick up the next one. But I'm going to leave a five chain gap. So one, two, three, four and five. And then I'm just going to insert my hook into the next chain space. And slip stitch so it's now in position and then I'm just going to insert my hook into the next stitch and work double crochet and you just do this all the way along so however many bunting flags you've got going in your set you just do this all the way along so I'm just going to insert my hook into that last space there now just pretend this is the end of my set of bunting just so I can show you. Uh, so all I would do is continue on now with 42 more chains. And there we go, 42. And all you would do is work all the way back down. So you would insert, we're going to now insert our hook into not the first chain, but the second chain from our hook. So insert your hook into that second chain and work double crochet and we're just going to reinsert our hook all the way back down into the chains working double crochet working double crochet in every stitch that you've made back along all the chains that you've done all the way along to the end and work your double crochets so i'll just finish off these last few double crochets to go we go just going to trim my yarn and just pull it through and all I've got to do now is block my flags so yeah so that's how you make your pretty vintage style bunting here is my set all joined together that we did in the tutorial. I've obviously done the pink, the white and the green and I have got I've got nine flags on my length of bunting. Now I haven't blocked these flags so you can see they're a little bit curly on the edge 
Um, so I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how to block your crochet work. There's two ways or two methods that I use. So I'll do a separate tutorial on that. But how pretty and how simple was that? So I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give me that lovely thumbs up. And as I always say, please hit that subscribe button and that bell. Then you'll never miss out on anything that I bring out. I'm off to do some more crochet designing. I'm doing a little bit of dressmaking as well this week. So watch this space and I shall hopefully share those videos with you soon. Uh, if you've got any questions or anything or if you've got anything you want to comment on the bunting, don't forget to add it in the box below. I love reading your comments and I always get back to you. But as I always say, practice does make perfect. Please take care and as always, happy crochet! Mm -hmm.